So, hi students, today we are going to start a new chapter. The name of the chapter is AC, not air conditioner. It is alternating current. So, let us uh, start with the definition. So, the definition is, it is a current whose magnitude Magnitude means the value of the current, 1 ampere, 2 ampere, like that. So, it is a current whose magnitude and direction, direction means whether it is flowing this way in the circuit or it is flowing this way in the circuit. So, it is a current whose magnitude and direction changes periodically with time. So, what is AC students? It is a current whose magnitude and direction changes periodically with time. Which word, if I ask you to underline, you should underline. Periodically. So, periodically means what? After every regular interval, it should repeat. So, after 5 seconds, so in 5 seconds, if the value goes from 0 to 2, then from 2 to minus 2, then again minus 2 to 0. So, that is called one period. Then it should repeat the values. Okay, 0 to 2, 2 to minus 2, then again minus 2 to 0. So, next one should be same, same, like 0 to 2, 2 to minus 2, minus 2 to 0. Again, same, 0 to 2, 2 to minus 2, minus 2 to 0. So, that is the meaning of periodically. The values should repeat. Clear, students? Yes, sir. Usually, we represent AC. Achha, let me only ask you. Suppose this is the current and this is the time. If I draw this graph, is it AC or not AC? What do you think? Sir, it's DC, sir. It's DC. Okay, so this is not AC. It is called DC. DC is the direct current. The value will remain constant in magnitude, also in direction. What about this one? It is AC. No, no. It is pulsating DC. It is not AC. Pulsating matlab changing. Pulsating matlab changing, but still it is DC only. Can somebody tell me why it is not AC? If it is AC, it should, uh, when, it, when it decreases, it should go below the x axis. The direction. The direction. So if I draw like this, no, it means the current is always positive only. See? So, it is plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, then again plus 2, see, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, then again plus 2, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1. So, it always remains plus. So, current flows this way. Only thing is the magnitude changes. Matlab first maybe 5 coulomb flows per second. Next time 4 coulomb four flows per second. Next time 2 coulomb flows per second. But it stays in the same direction. Then that kind of current is called DC only, but pulsating. Then this is your this is your what now? This is AC. This is AC. Even this is AC, okay? Though we don't discuss usually these kind of signals, but computer science students, if you are there, so this is also AC. This kind of signals are called square wave. Square wave. This kind of signals is called sinusoidal wave. Sinusoidal. 
So it's called sinusoidal because it looks like sine graph, sir. Yeah. Not only this one, even even if it is cosine, even cosine is called sinusoidal. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. So this is also AC. And this is also sinusoid. Can you can anybody tell me what is the difference between these two graphs? Sir, in second, it's starting second from zero and it's starting from zero. From zero. Yeah. So but the, this one we should use sine function to represent. This one we should use cosine function. Agree? Yes, yes sir. sir. But if I don't show you the starting, it is impossible to distinguish. Okay. So both are AC only. Only the difference is at the start. Matlab, when you want a time zero. So it's like a pendulum which is moving to and fro. So Pankaj sir started the watch when the pendulum was at the mean position. But you started the watch when the pendulum is at extreme position. So both are oscillation only, but my case, because it started from mean position, I will use sine function because at t is zero, displacement should be zero. So sine zero will give zero, but you will use cos function because at time zero, you started the watch when the pendulum is at extreme position. Okay, now, so we, remember, we can use either sine function or cosine function to represent AC, but don't think only these two kinds of AC are there. There are any kinds of square wave, triangular wave, many are there. The source of DC is batteries. Okay, batteries produce constant current we know. The source of AC is something called AC generator. The working of this will be done in the previous chapter. Hmm, very funny, no? Usually we see in the next chapter. So in the previous chapter, we study something called electromagnetic induction. So there we will study the source of AC generator. Now you don't need to worry. And the symbol for the AC generator, we write like this. Okay, so just like for batteries, for DC, we write like this. For DC source, for AC source, we write this kind of symbol. Now, some math that we need. That let me discuss. Suppose I want to find average marks of 10 students. Then you know marks changes from students to students, right? Physics marks changes from student to student. And what is the technique to find average marks of the students? You add all the marks of the students and divide by what students? Number of students. Number of students. Number of students. So similarly, how to find average of a function? How to find average? Not marks, but average of a function that I want to teach. So imagine y is a function of x. So as you change x, y changes. So it is like as you change students, this is your students and this is your marks in the example which I gave you. Now, marks, the, the thing with marks is it jumps. Jumps means what, sir? The, the value of the marks will jump from one value to another value. No, it will not go continuous, right? If one got 62, other will get 63 or 65. It will not be 62, then continuously it will not become 63. Correct? No, but this is a function. Function will change continuously. For example, the graph of y versus x may look something like this. I don't know. So as I change x, the value of y is changing continuously. So here, how to find that average? So the symbol for average of y, we write like this. So this symbol I use for average. 
and this y is whose average I want. So if I want average of y, I should write this symbol with y. And the formula is very simple. Integrate, obviously, because it is a function. It changes continuously. So add y and then divide by the number of students. Here, who is this number of students? Y or x? X. x. So you have to divide by from where to where? 0 to suppose x if you go. From here to here if you integrate, then you have to divide by x. That's it. So this is the concept of calculating average. I don't know in maths they have taught you or not. But here I am teaching you. Average of a function which is function of time x. I integrate the function dt from 0 to let's say capital T, then divide by what students? Compare to T, sir. Capital T. So that is how we should find. You can add y also if you want. But in this example, y should be function of time, no? Yes, sir. So this concept, I hope everybody understood, it comes from the normal concept of average only. Only difference is this is function. So it will not change like marks. Marks will jump 10, 15, 17, 70 like that. But here the function will change continuously. So we cannot use normal summation. We have to use integration. And if you remember, the numerator actually is area under y x graph. Yes or no, guys? Yes, sir. Whenever you say integration, it is area. So this is also very useful. Because sometimes they, if they give you triangle kind of shape, it's easy to find the area, then do the integration. Correct, no? If limit is not from 0, then write x1 to x2, x1 to x2, and here write x2 minus x1. Like let me write for this one. If it is from t1 to t2, then here you write the number of in the, the interval t2, t2 minus t1. So suppose y is a function of theta, sine theta. And all of you know sine theta graph looks like this. And who knows this interval is how much? 2 pi. 2 pi. And this 2 pi is also called the period. Period of the sine function, the smallest period. Now, understand one thing. Whenever people say find average of an oscillating function, Usually, they will not tell the interval. If they don't tell the interval, then assume you have to calculate for one period. What did I say? Whenever they want average of any function, you have to mention the interval. How can you say find average of uh, some number of students, which I will not tell you like that? You have to tell me the size of the sample. So, sign varies with theta. So, for what interval of theta, I should calculate the average. That they should tell me. So, if they don't tell me, I will always assume I have to calculate the average for one period, which is 2 pi, okay, 0 to 2 pi. So, I want average of sine theta. What is the formula? Integral sine theta from which interval they did not say. So, I will measure from one period. One period, matter 0 to 2 pi. Divided by what students? 2 pi. 2 pi. Now, this integration, without doing, can you tell the answer? Without doing, I know some of you have started to do. Just see the graph and tell me. 0. Why 0? Integrate means what? Add only. Can you see sign values are positive and also negative at the same negative so, as many times it becomes positive in the first half, it also becomes negative in the second half. So, average of sign will always be zero, even if you don't know this formula. Tell me yes or no. Munaza? Yes, sir. Because as many positive values are there, that many negative values are there. And average means first I have to add the marks. 
I mean, here in this case, add the values of sine theta. And therefore, I will get zero, but it does check also. Integral of sine theta is, I think, minus cos theta. Am I right? Yes. More good in integration nowadays. 2 pi 0. Put upper limit minus cos 2 pi minus put lower limit minus cos 0. Cos 2 pi is cos 360 degree is 1. So minus 1. Minus minus plus cos 0 is 1. Minus 1 plus 1 0. But this is called time waste. This is called time waste because from the graph you should be able to tell the average value of sine is always zero for one period. So a very important note for our chapter AC we should remember. Average value of sine function is zero. I don't care who is here. You can put here flower also. Because the moment you put flower, I know whoever is this flower, it has to take values of theta. Because mathematically, sine is defined only for theta, right? So, sine function for one period is always zero when you calculate the average. So, I want now average of sine square function. Just guess once. Will it be zero now also? No, sir. No, sir. If you plot sine square now, will there be negative part? No. No. Now there will be only positive part. So sine theta graph looks like this. Sine square will be both will be on the positive side. And one because square of one is one only. Man. So the maximum value will be one only sine square also but it will not have negative part. Sherry, cut the point. Yes, sir. What is the average of any function? Integrate the function from 0 to, let's say, not let's say, we have to do for one period. One period, matlab 2 pi divided by 2 pi. So 1 by 2 pi. Now, how do you integrate sine square? You should know that in, ma in mathematics, they will give you some certain formulas of integration. And in question, they will ask some formulas. If the question formula is matching with your formula, do it. If it's not matching, you have to convert your question formula into one of those formulas. That is the whole game of integration. So one way you can uh, <coughs> do here is divide by 2 and multiply with 2. Then this will become 1 by 4 pi. And what is 2 sine square theta? 1 minus cos 2 pi. 1 minus cos 2, minus cos two, two minus theta. Cos two theta. So nice. So this is 1 by 4 pi. First term, if you integrate, what will you get, guys? Integral 1 d theta will be theta. If you put upper limit, lower limit, you will get 2 pi. 2 pi. Everybody agree? Integral 1 d theta is theta. Put upper limit, lower limit, 2 pi. Yes, sir. Minus, this term no need to do because this is cos function. And cos function looks like this for one period. Yes or no, students? Cos function looks like this for one period. So if you see, as much positive value, that much negative value. So this will give you zero. Otherwise, those students who want to use formula for cos Ax, you can use array integral cos 2 theta d theta. Also, we can do by maths, ma. Yes, sir. It is what? Sin 2 theta by 2, na? Yes, sir. Then put upper limit, lower limit. No need to put. If you put upper limit 2 pi, it will become sine 4 pi. Sine 4 pi is 0 because even multiples of pi, sine is 0. Minus lower limit, sine 0, 0. So this is 0 minus 0, 0. But don't waste your time. 
the moment you see cos function without any square, cube, then believe me, your answer will be zero. So what is the final answer, students? Pi pi cancels, 2 and 4 cancels. So 2 pi by 4 pi will be kidna. Half. Now what I want all of you to do, if you want, forget this, I don't mind. Forget. But this you should not forget. Average of sine square function, some variable, or cos square. Cos square I did not do. You try yourself. Will you do? Yes, yes sir. Okay, you take time. Yes, Both will come half. For one period. So please memorize this. This is the main thing you should memorize for this chapter and I have given you the detailed proof. So there is something called phaser. So I want you guys to understand today a new concept called phaser. I teach this in oscillation chapter, oscillation and waves. But since I could not teach you in first few, let me revise once. So what is this phaser? Any alternating quantity, alternating quantity can be represented by phaser. So basically phasers are used to represent alternating quantities. Now, Alternating quantity doesn't mean only AC, remember. For example, when you take a pendulum and do like this, and you leave the pendulum, the displacement of the pendulum will keep alternating. Yes or no? Will keep changing. 0 to A, A to 0, 0 to minus A, minus A to 0, 0 to A. Understood, guys? Yes, sir. So, let us write some formula for y, alternating quantity, example, I written y. How will you write? Well, sine must be there or cos. Why sine? Because it is alternating. And which mathematical function alternates? Logarithm, exponential, algebraic, no, trigonometry. That also sine and cos. Tan we cannot use because tan, no, the problem is tan also is alternating. But tan becomes undefined at 90 degree. And our, uh, our pendulum never has undefined position. Our pendulum is always at finite position. It is never infinite. So tan theta we cannot use even if it is a periodic function. So what kind of function we can use? Sine or cos. I am going for sine right now. So first of all, tell everybody, do you believe that sine should be there in this function if it is alternating? Yes. yes. Now, in front of this, what should be there? Maximum value of this? Because sign becomes maximum when sign is 1 though. So whoever is here should be the maximum value of 1 and that is called amplitude. So sign function goes from 0 to 1. But our displacement may not go from 0 to only 1, no. It may go from 0 to 2 meter. 0 to 2.3 meter, 0 to 0 0.7 meter. So, how do we represent what is this? 0 to A meter. So, A is your amplitude, the maximum value. So, this A is called amplitude of Y or sometimes people call it peak value of Y. Yes, let now. First class, you tell. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Now, here, what should I put? Obviously, our pendulum's displacement is changing with time or not? Yes, sir. So, I want to put time here. But if I put time here, uh, Suresh sir, Ajit sir, uh, uh, KM sir will get, uh, LG sir will feel bad. Because sign mathematically is defined for angle. But I want as a physicist time. So I want time, but they will not allow me. So what will I do? To make this angle, 
I will define a quantity called omega. So omega I will call some angle by time. To cross multiply, what will be angle? Omega into time. So instead of putting theta, I will put omega t. So now I am also happy, they are also happy. I am happy because my y will change with time. They are happy because now this is angle. Is it clear students still here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, this is how we write any alternating quantity y equals to a sin omega t. Now, what is this omega that I have to tell you? Now, as this pendulum does like this, like this, if you plot the graph of the displacement with time, it will look like this. And this is called time period. What period students? Time period. Because after that time, it repeats. But mathematically, I can write the same y in terms of theta. Because now th this, I can imagine this is theta. See here. Then it will look like this only. And this will be what? If, if the x-axis is theta, what will be this? Sir, 2 pi. 2 pi. So, do you see that in time capital T, the angle covered is 2 pi. In time capital T, this theta will become 2 pi. That means I can write omega as 2 pi by capital T. Agree or not? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So when this theta becomes 2 pi, the time taken in the time variable will be capital T. What is 1 by capital T called from school days? Frequency. frequency. And that's why omega is called angular frequency. Don't confuse it with angular speed. The angular speed comes when something is revolving. Nothing is revolving here. Hey, who is revolving here? Nobody. It's an alternating quantity. See, alternating. 0, A, 0, minus A, 0, A, 0, minus A. So nothing is nothing is revolving in a circle, but, but something is repeating. And whenever something is repeating, we can define frequency. And when you multiply frequency with 2 pi, that is called angular frequency. Now, I would like to tell you, what is this? Phase actually, phase. Anybody knows phase? What is phase from class 11 definition? Don't Google an answer. Ma. If you remember, tell me. If you don't remember, forgot you tell. Forgot, sir. Okay. So let me quickly tell you what is phase. Suppose students, Aparna also forgot, no problem. Suppose you want to know my state. My state, not the geography state, my condition. Then what you should know? Few things about me you should know. You should check my, maybe my, you should send me to, to hospital for some checkup. Then you should see my report, my blood pressure, my sugar, my whatever. So from there you will come to know, oh, Pankaj sir is in a good state or Pankaj sir is not in a good state, right? So that, so to know my state, you have to know some few things. Similarly, when there is an alternating quantity, you need to know two things. First, how much value it has and where it is going, whether it is going up or whether it is coming down. By up, I mean whether it is going away from zero, this side, or is it coming towards zero, this side, where it is and where it is going. So if I know these two things, I know the state of vibration. And that state of vibration, some of, one of the student wrote, that state of vibration is called phase. And mathematically, who will give you state of vibration? Look carefully. This is your theta. Omega t. This omega t. Because if, the, if this theta is zero, tell me the value of this y. Past zero. Zero. So zero. You, are, you are here. You are in the mean position the voltage, the current or the pendulum, whoever is alternating, I don't know. 
in this chapter current will alternate but in oscillation chapter pendulum used to oscillate right when this theta becomes 180 degree again zero when theta becomes 90 degree what is y value a a so you are here when theta becomes 270 degree it is minus a so basically you come to know the state of the body and that is given by this angle and that is called in physics phase so remember omega is not phase omega is angular frequency omega into time is phase at that time and this a is called peak value so to completely describe a alternating quantity you need two things its amplitude and what other thing you should know phase so once you know this two you know the complete information about the alternating quantity now go to first few few first few chapter vectors when we studied a vector requires two things first you take Magnitude, magnitude, magnitude and direction. Magnitude we used to represent by length of some line. Remember length. Yes, sir. And direction we used to represent by giving this angle. Same thing we are going to do, students. Same thing. Alternating quantities also have two things similar to vectors. Alternating quantities have amplitude and this phase. Phase is basically mathematically phase is angle only. So therefore, we can represent alternating quantity by an arrow. We can represent alternating quantities by an arrow. By the way, why are we doing all this? So that we can simplify the maths. If you remember, adding vectors became very easy once I told this concept. You know, parallelogram we used. Remember, sir. So, now why are we doing this? We are doing this so that the mathematics of alternating quantity will be easy. So, let's come back. Alternating quantities also have two things. Amplitude and phase. Amplitude we will represent by length of this arrow. And this angle the arrow makes with some reference line. This reference line you can choose wherever you want. This angle will give you what students can you guess? Omega t. Name you tell name. Face. 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 Understood? No. So this length will be your amplitude and this space will be your omega t. So this kind of arrow is what is called phase. Mathematically, alternating current will have amplitude and phase. Amplitude we will represent by length of some arrow. Phase we will represent by this angle. And this idea is very useful later when you have to add two alternating quantities. Okay. So if somebody says y is 2 sine theta and another function is 3 sine theta. Sorry cos theta. Now, what is the difference, uh, phase difference between sin theta and cos theta? Can you check and tell me? 90 degree. 90 degree. Because cos theta can be written sin theta plus 90. Yes or no? Yes, so, if y1 is here, if the phasor of y1 is here, the phasor of y2 will be here. And what is the length of this phasor I told? It represents amplitude. Amplitude. What is amplitude of the first phaser? 2. 2. Amplitude of the second phaser? 3. Three. And the resultant of these two will be very easy to calculate if you know parallelogram. Yes. Root 13. So that is the answer for resultant amplitude. So, whenever they give y1 like this, y2 like this, and they ask you to find y1 plus y2 amplitude, only amplitude. 
then trigonometrically if you add it will take time so best thing is what represent this by a phaser represent this by a phaser how to uh, know the angle simple this is sin theta this is cos theta cos theta can be written sin 9 theta plus 90 which means if you compare the face of this sin theta and this sin theta what do you see here the face is theta here the face is how much theta plus 90 so what is the face difference 90 degree 90 degree everybody understood this yes, sir. is yes, sir. only for uh, entrance don't worry nobody will ask this for a uh, uh, board so like this you try to add these two function Like this, if they give, what will you do? Just let me tell you. First phaser, how will you represent? Its amplitude is 3. So this length is 3. Angle you assume anywhere you want. Other one is where? Other one, if you compare the phase of this and phase of this, what is the phase difference? 60 degree. 60 degree. So other one you will draw here. 60 degree. And what is the amplitude of the second one? 2. And now you can easily find using vector formula root over 3 square plus 2 square plus 2 into 3 into 2 into cos 60. Yes or no, students? Yes, sir. So that way, adding, adding two alternating quantities becomes very easy if you know this phasor uh, technique. Mathematical representation of AC. So suppose you have an alternating current. Alternating current. How will you represent it mathematically? I equals to. Simple. Some amplitude you will write Y equals to A sin omega T. Before your Y was alternating, now your current is alternating. So current is equals to amplitude sin omega T. Yes, sir. What will you call this one? Amplitude or you can say peak, peak value. Current. Peak value of current. And this you know already. This is called phase. How will you represent alternating voltage? V equals to. Tell me somebody formula like this. V naught sine omega t. V naught sine omega t. And this V naught is called your peak voltage. Okay, that's it. Now, let me tell you something called RMS current or RMS voltage. Try to understand what is this RMS current or RMS voltage. Listen carefully. Usually, when things change, how do you know the effect of the change? By calculating its average. For example, in a class, let's say the marks of the students are changing. And I want to know how the class is behaving in physics, how the overall class effect is. Then usually what teachers will do, they will calculate the average marks. Then they come to know how the teacher is doing, how the overall class is behaving. Yes or no? Yes, sir. But the problem with alternating current is, because the formula of alternating current is I equals to I naught sine omega t. If you calculate the average value of the current, I average, you will get I naught is constant, take it outside, average of sine. What was average of sine? Zero. 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 So average current will be zero. Does it mean current has no effect, students? No. No, current has effect. You can put, you, if I put my finger in the socket, I will come to know the effect. If I, pass, if I pass current in a bulb, I will know the effect. So obviously current has effect, but you cannot measure that effect by calculating average. Then what shall we do? Now think all of you, from school days you know. 
current produces in a bulb what which is which is uh, which blows the bulb when current flows in the resistance of the bulb what it produces heat yes or no heat and what is the formula for that heat produced from from joule's law you should know joule's law i square r t agree power into time are power into time yes sir so can you see here i square yes sir that means what that means heat produced does not depend on whether current is plus or current is minus so we use this heat formula to actually measure ac because we cannot measure ac by its average value so what we do to measure ac so measured value of ac how do we calculate students listen carefully first we will square the current first we will square the current then we will take average will this be zero already i told you in one example no no, no this will no. not be zero this will not be zero after doing this but we still want effect of current we don't want effect of square of current so what we will do square then the units will come ampere yes <laughs> this concept we use to measure the ac so this is called root mean square current and we write the formula i rms similarly what will be rms square the voltage take the average then take the square root relation between rms value and peak value relation between rms value and peak value quick we just derive we will derive for current so ac current how do we represent i equals to i not sin omega, 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 omega t now i want to find i rms what i have to first do square the current then take average then take square root good news we will not do the integration because already we have done it so just substitute this what is current students i not sin omega t substitute i not square sin square omega t i not square is constant average of constant is how much same only yes sir right so i not can be taken outside the average average of sin square omega t i hope all of you understood this part i know this constant peak value is constant current is changing obviously i am not saying current is constant but peak value is constant like this so current is changing but peak value is every time i know what is root of i not square i not i, I not and what is root of oh sorry average, this is average remember okay this sign is for average yes sir now tell me what is the average of sin square 1 by 2 1 by 2 right so this will become i not root 1 is 1 only by root 2 so this is the formula between i rms on the left hand side don't forget to write i rms so what is the relation between i rms and i not i rms is i not by root 2 yes i rms is i not by root 2 again student this is only for sign function sir only for sinusoidal ac this information is important for entrants similarly i will not do that one for alternating voltage how will you write v rms any guess v not by root 2 v not by root 2 super so, 
for the AC voltage. Achha. When people say AC voltage, you should think of alternating voltage. Okay, don't say alternating current voltage. So that is how people write what to do. So for the AC voltage, V equals to um, somebody uh, use calculator and tell me this value. 220 into 1.732. Three eighty one point zero. No, 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 sorry, sorry. One point four one four. Three hundred and three one one point three one one point zero eight. Three one one point three one one point zero eight. Zero eight. So V equals to this sign hundred pi T where V is in volts and T is in seconds. So this is your alternating voltage. This will be given in the question. So V is equals to something sin something. And V is in what units? Volts. Time is in what units? Seconds. What you have to find? Find RMS voltage and number two, frequency of the voltage. RMS voltage and frequency. So how to answer this question? What you should do? First, you compare this formula with the standard formula of AC. V naught sin omega t. Then if you compare, comparing, what will you get as the peak voltage? This is your peak voltage. Yes or no, Nandini? Yes, sir. So this V naught is your this is peak voltage of so three one one point zero eight volts. But our aim was to find VRMS. What is the formula for VRMS? VRMS is equals to V naught by root two. So three one one point zero eight divided by root two is one point four one four. How much it will come? Two twenty. Uh, now you understood what, why I did like this. Yes, <laughs> because I know this is the RMS voltage for our country. So we found one answer, first answer. Also, also by comparing, what should be your omega? 100 pi. 100 pi, very good. Don't miss the pi, okay? Some people will say only 100. So omega is just coefficient of t and between sine. So between sine and t, this is your omega. So omega is 100 pi. Now, I gave you in the beginning formula for omega. 2 pi by t and 1 by t is frequency. So omega formula is 2 pi f. Yes, sir. Pi pi cancel. So frequency will be 50 hertz. Right. So I adjusted the problem in such a way that it comes, values comes according to our countries, countries voltage. Right first. So till now what we did, just let's recap once. Alternating currents are what currents? Those currents whose magnitude and direction changes periodically with time. How do we represent alternating current? Some peak value and some phase. This bracket part is called phase and this is called amplitude. Now, a nice way of adding, again listen carefully, the nice way of adding 
alternating quantities is not by using trigonometry. If you use trigonometry, it will take a lot of formulas and remembering too many formulas and all. Best way of adding alternating quantities is represent the peak value by length of an arrow and angle with some line as phase. So this is your omega t and this is your peak value. Okay. So this much we have done till now and we have learned IRMS is the measured value, measured value of AC and how it is related to peak value, I naught by root 2. The topic is AC applied to resistor. AC applied to resistor. And such a circuit is called students pure resistive circuit. What circuit? Pure resistive circuit because there is only resistance. So the diagram will be like this. This is the resistance R. And here we are not going to connect battery students. We will connect AC source. And every AC source will have what kind of voltage, alternating voltage, right? So instantaneous applied voltage, instantaneous applied voltage V is equals to V naught sine omega t. Equation one. Now I want current. No need to show direction because that will keep changing. Now, instantaneous current will be what? Instantaneous current. Instant, 10, 10. What is this now? Instant, 10. Instant, instantaneous current. Tell me, students, if you know voltage in a resistor, then how do you find current? Which law you use? Ohm's law. Ohm's law. So how will I write? V by R. Correct or not? Agree. Substitute the voltage. Now, mathematically, if somebody will ask, what is the maximum value of this voltage? Obviously, when sign will be 1. Yes? Yes, sir. And when sine is 1, what will be the voltage? V0. So that's why we say V0 is the peak value. Similarly, here if you observe, who is the peak value of current if I ask? It will be when sine is 1. And what will be that peak value? V0 by R. Agree or not? Yes, sir. So we will write this formula like this. I equals to I0 sin omega t equation 2 but we must mention i naught should be what in place of whom i wrote i naught v naught by r v naught by r so if resistance is more your peak current will be less obviously expected now from 1 and 2 we see don't write, don't write. Just observe now for some time. Look at the formula of voltage. Sine omega t. So what is the phase? What is the phase of voltage? Omega t. See the formula of current. What is the volt? What is the phase of current? Omega t. Omega t. So from one and two, we see that current and voltage are in same phase. This is what they will ask you to prove in exam. Show that in resistive circuit, in resistive circuit, we see that in resistive circuit. Then at the end, they will ask, they will also ask you to draw phasor diagram. How will you draw phasor diagram? Here I will show you, okay? This is at the last you do, last. Phaser diagram. 
phasor diagram means let us say I represent this voltage by this phasor. The length is the peak value, right? And whatever angle it makes with some line, I don't care where the line is, that angle is your omega t. I can show it angle also. I can show it straight also, doesn't matter. Now tell me, if this is where the phasor of voltage is, where will be the phasor of current? Same or at some angle? With some angle. Same. With some same. angle. Who said with some angle? Omega t, omega t, same, no, Baba. So if voltage okay. will be here, current also will be here. So if voltage is here, current also will be here. Agree or not? Yes, sir. Ah. So voltage, current also will be here. The length may not be same, obviously. Okay, if you want to draw this way also, you can draw or current like this, then voltage should be here. You know, students, why both are allowed? Why both are allowed? Do you know, students? Because this T keeps on changing or not? Time, time. Yes, sir. And so this omega T keeps changing. Omega T changes, but this omega will keep changing. Oh, it is not this side. So this omega t, this angle, omega t keeps changing. See, like this. The time, time always increases. So I can always show the photo when the phasor is here. Agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now last topic is we'll apply AC to capacitor. So AC applied to capacitor will do. And three derivations I have to do. First one we completed, AC applied to resistor. Now we will do AC applied to capacitor. The last one is AC applied to inductor. What is inductor? First we will discuss that one and then we will apply. In all the cases, we will do the same thing. What same thing, sir? We will apply AC voltage and we will try to derive formula for current and we will check the peak value of current and we will check the phasor diagram. Clear clarity came. Now what we'll put here? Capacitor. Capacitor. Now this capacitor, when this is plus minus, plus minus, electrons will go this way. So current will be this way. When this is minus plus, electrons will go this way. So this capacitor we will get charged plus minus later plus minus once, later minus plus, later plus minus, later minus plus, later plus minus, later minus plus. It keeps on alternating because your voltage is alternating. Now students, for capacitor, can I directly write I equal to V by R? First of all, that is that formula is applied for whom? V equal to I by R. This is capacitance, so we cannot do that. So what we can do in capacitance? We can calculate instantaneous. Anybody? Charge. Ah, super. What is the formula for instantaneous charge Q equal to? CV. Substitute B. B naught sine omega T. But I told you our aim is to find current. Now, if you know instantaneous charge, how will you find instantaneous current? Calculus you have to use. Current electricity chapter. First day I taught you current instantaneous V by Q. Substitute Q. Substitute this Q here. Constant you take outside. C V not outside. D by dt sin omega t. What is differentiation of sin ax? Cos cos a. a cos a. So what is differentiation of sin omega t? Omega, omega. cos omega. Sin. Right. Differentiation of sin will be cos. Hmm. Now, wait, wait. Understand. This time, 
who is in front of cos this fellow c b not omega so we will replace this by i not because if somebody will ask what is the maximum value of current it will be when cos is 1 and when cos is 1 maximum value of current will be c v not omega but i must mention what is i not students c v not omega c v not omega now i have seen some students saying like this look here phase of voltage omega t phase of current omega t omega t omega t same phase that is wrong you cannot compare sachin tendulkar and sania mirza because they are from different fields similarly this is sine function this is cos function you cannot compare them directly first you have to convert cos into sine and then you can compare understood the concept Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. So, we all know sine theta plus 90 is cos theta. Right? So, I am going to use this here. Uh, don't write 90 plus theta. Why, sir? It is same only. I know it is same kata. But don't write. It is not a good habit. I will tell you why. Look here. So, how will that cos omega t? Cos omega t plus 9. Uh, who is this? Uh, how will we write cos omega t plus 90? Now, tell me. Kulsum. Uh, now, tell me why we are doing like this. Simple. We know the phase of voltage. What is the phase of voltage? Fast. No time. Omega, 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 but for minus, it matters. That's why I have a habit of writing this way. This way. Okay? So, this is your equation 2. Then, I don't have space. So, first you write this much. Then, we will write the same story what we wrote for resistor. But everybody understood the derivation. Here, you cannot write I, uh, V equal to I by R. This is not Ohm's law circuit. So, first you have to find instantaneous charge, Cv, then you have to find current. And when you do differentiation, our sign will become cos, which did not happen in the resistor. In the resistor case, it was algebraic equation, V by R. But this is calculus, differential equation. So, after doing differentiation, we found this equation. Okay? So, now write down. So, don't write this initial part because we have already written. Voltage we applied alternating and we know alternating quantities are represented this way amplitude sin omega t and current in capacitor we found interesting i naught sine it was not omega t it was omega t plus sin t and this value of i naught was also very interesting it was not v naught by r it was c v naught omega so, till here we understood. Now, from equation 1 and 2, from equations 1 and 2, we see that in a capacitive circuit, this is a capacitive circuit. Can you tell me, students, who is leading, who is ahead in phase, in phase? Current or voltage? Current, current, ahead? current. Current, because this is omega t plus 90. I mean, if, if voltage phasor is here, omega t, this will be omega t plus 90. Understanding? 
like this it will do so if phasor of uh, voltage is making omega t angle with some reference line that doesn't matter then this will make omega t plus 90 understanding or not yes sir okay. yes sir so what i should write at the end from equations 1 and 2 we see that in a capacitive circuit current leads leads voltage in race huh? in race no sir in phase by how much angle 90 degree or we can say pi by 2 radians okay very very important and then we will draw one phasor diagram so if voltage is this the length represents the peak value don't forget your current will be here And this angle will be 90 degrees. Right now. Uh, topic name I will not write now. First we will discuss, then we will write topic name. So we know that in a capacitive circuit, the peak current the peak current <coughs> I naught was equal to check the formula and tell omega C V naught. C V naught omega. Now I want to bring somebody in the denominator so that I know who is playing the role of R. Where is R, sir? Here is R. So I know this is playing the role of opposing current. I want to know who is playing here that role. Students, if 2 is in the numerator, but I want to write it 2 in denominator, how can I write? 1 by 1 by 2, can I write? Sandana? Yes, sir. You can write 2 as 1 by 1 by 2. So, what I will do, V0 I will keep in numerator like this and this C omega I will bring in the denominator of denominator. Is it same or different? Pass your term, we don't have time. Same. 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 But, but the good thing of writing this way is now I came to know who is playing the role of resistance. This fellow. Isn't it? Yes, sir. And we are going to give a name. Namkaran will do. The name of this is XC. That is not name, sir. That is symbol. Yeah, symbol is XC. Name of this is capacitive reactance. Capacitive reactance. So, topic name is actually capacitive reactance. And what is the formula for capacitive reactance? In place of what I wrote, XC students, 1 by C omega. So, how will you write peak current in capacitive circuit? You can write in the same style as Ohm's law, V by R. But R should be replaced by whom? XC. Is it clear? See, I'm creating it. I'm not just saying to you. I can say directly also, but I'm trying to create it organically. I mean, mathematically, logically. Clear or not clear? Clear, sir. Okay. So now finally, they will ask you, what is capacitive reactance? Definition for one mark. What will you write? Capacitive reaction. It is the opposition. What this fellow is doing here? Remove it. It is the opposition to the flow of AC by which device? 
capacitor. So the opposition to the flow of AC by capacitor is what is called capacitive reactance. And the formula for capacitive reactance is 1 by C omega. Say 5 times this formula. Xc is equal to 1 by C omega. 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 Last, Xc is equal to 1 by C omega. So, write right down. So, a few small things you see, then we'll stop. Few points about Xc. Capacitive reactants. First one, Xc formula is 1 by C omega and omega formula is what in terms of frequency? 2 pi s. 2 pi s. When I say Xc is inversely proportional to frequency, yes sir, you can say why you cannot say. So they will ask graph of Xc versus frequency. Since it is 1 by, it will be rectangular hyperbola like this. Matlab, when frequency increases, to infinity, frequency increases to infinity, your reactance decreases to zero. Then for DC, achha, last one, this one you tell. For DC, what is frequency do you think? For direct current, no changing current. No frequency, zero. No frequency, it doesn't oscillate. So for DC, frequency is zero. So what will be your reactance? Infinity. Infinity. Now go to that day when I taught you RC circuit. What I told you, capacitor after a long time, when the steady state reaches, steady state, no more changes, no more frequency. It acts like open eye to remember. Kiran. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, can you please explain cyclotron for like 10 minutes? I was absent. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. First, you finish this writing part. Okay. Monaza, look here. This is called D's. D1 and D2 are called D's. Basically, they are cylinders, hollow cylinders. So, you take a cylinder like this. Take a hollow cylinder, then you cut in the middle. Then from here, if you see, you will get these two semicircle D's, which you solve a separate you do, like this gap you put, and here you keep. So these are hollow cylinders, okay? Hollow half cylinders. Now, you connect this to some potential difference. Let's say this is plus minus right now. And here you release a charge. The aim of cyclotron is to make charges move very, very fast. Why? Because those fast moving charges you can use to heat some uh, nucleus. And if it is fast enough, the nucleus can break. And that is called nuclear reactions. So cyclotrons are used to study nuclear reactions. And sometimes by breaking the nucleus, we create something called radioactive isotope. For example, uh, iodine, not iodine, iodine is also radioactive. Uh, uranium. Uranium, cobalt. So cobalt uh, 61 or something is also radioactive and that is used in hospitals to diagnose or to, to cure or to prevent, uh, to cure, I can say cancer. Not cure, but to... Treat know, cancer. To? Treat cancer. Treat cancer, yeah. Treat. Yeah. Treat is a good word. Cure means we don't know, right? It's cured or not. So these things are used. These things are used to create fast moving particles. So now this plus charge which I created here, because this right now this D is minus, this will be feeling a force this side. Because right now this D is connected to plus, this D is connected to minus, there will be electric field this way. Inside electric field will be zero, remember, that you know from electrostatics. Inside conductor, electric field is zero. So this plus charge will feel a force this side. So it will accelerate and it will go inside the D. 
After going inside, there is no electric field, so no force. Then you go straight and it hit the back side. Now you don't want this. So what do you want? You want it to turn. Now, how do you turn a charge? Simple, apply magnetic field. Because already I have told you, if charge is moving this side, then magnetic field you apply outside, then V cross V will be down, right? So what we do, we apply everywhere magnetic field outside the board. If you apply inside also no problem. Inside if you apply, it will go this way. Outside if you apply, it will go this way. So this red color you remove better. Yeah. So these dots are your magnetic field. So what these dots will do now, these magnetic fields will do, this charge going this side has velocity this side. Magnetic field is outside the board. So V cross V will be down. Understood, Munaza? Yes, sir. So the force will be down. So the charge will go in a circle like this. Now this is a problem. When this plus charge will come here, this plus C will repel. Yes or no? Yes. So that you don't want because you want it to move faster and faster. So this minus was attracting the plus. So it got accelerated and then magnetic field made it go round. When it reached here, this plus will send it back. You don't want that. So during the time this charge completes semicircle, very important. The time taken for this semicircle should be equal to, should be adjusted in such a way that during the time the charge comes from here to here, this polarity should somehow reverse. How somehow we'll see. But the moment this reverses, what will happen? This charge will move. This will be minus now. So it will be further attracted this side only. So it will move faster. Now, what was the formula for radius in magnetic field? R equals to? MV by QB. MV by QB. So the moment this charge moves faster, this V will increase. Automatically, radius will also increase. Time period doesn't change. Time period formula, if you remember, was 2 pi m by q. So the moment the charge reaches here, this is minus now. So it will further be attracted. Attraction means force. Force means acceleration. Acceleration means velocity will increase. So once velocity increases, radius will increase. So the charge will go in a bigger circle. During that time, it comes here now. Once it completes semicircular path, again the polarity should reverse. Otherwise, this plus will push it back. Then what will happen? By the time it comes here, again this is minus. So further this plus charge will be attracted. Further velocity will increase, further radius will increase. Same story should happen. By the time it reaches here, again it should reverse. So like this should keep happening, keep happening till it moves very, very fast. And finally, you are ready to take it out. When you're ready to take it out, there will be a small gap here. Deflecting plates will be there. And those plates will deflect the charge outside. And this, by the time it has reached here, it has moved very fast. So this fast moving charge particle can be used to do some studies. Now comes the point, how are we going to change the polarity depending on this? Simple, we'll keep here a AC generator. Just now we studied AC source. So this is called oscillator. So the voltage of oscillator, just now I told you, today's class will look like this. So for some interval, it will be plus minus positive. For next interval, it will be minus plus. Yes or no? So what we should adjust? Simple. During the time it completes half revolution, this should complete, this voltage should complete from here to here. So that from plus, the voltage will become minus. Understood, Manaza? Yes, sir. So during the time this comes here, this plus should go to this minus. So we know for AC, this is called time period of oscillator. 
So half of this time period should match with time taken for the semicircle. That's it. Now, what is time taken for semicircle? This is time taken for full circle. So this will be time period by two. Two two cancel. In other words, time period of the revolution of the charge should match with time period of oscillator. And what is time period of revolution of charge? Two pi m by q v. That should match with time period of oscillator. Frequency of oscillator ultra should match with frequency of revolution. How will you find frequency from time period ultra? You do. Yes. So this is the resonance condition. This is the main thing they will ask you. So what is resonance condition in cyclotron? If they ask, what will you write? Frequency of the oscillator used in the cyclotron should be equal to. Uh, this is called frequency of revolution. Frequency of revolution. This is frequency okay. of oscillator. Okay, so okay. this is mechanical device. This is some charge moving in circle. So don't confuse with these two. One is frequency okay. of oscillator device, and this is frequency of oscillation. That's it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So now, bye. Take care. Thank you, sir.